about the morning off with Little Rock. Okay, Megan, are you writing songs for guys on Epidemic Sound now? Because I feel like if you wrote a song, it would be Loving You is Like a Train Wreck Waiting to Happen. That that could be, that might be our theme song. That, that is correct. Yep, that is me writing. How's everybody doing out there today? Good to see you all here. So we're doing something that I didn't think that I would do, but what the heck, let's do it. Um, a lot of people have been um, using DaVinci Resolve, asking me questions. Um, I've been doing a short series that's been literally shorts of tips one a day. I really think that when you're learning a new software, that if you can sit and you can um, take just uh, you know like a, a 20 minutes in the morning, sitting with your coffee and learn something, that's one of the best ways to slowly learn something over time. Think about doing that five days a week. Imagine where you'd be in a year if you learned one new th little trick every morning and actually you know, got to implement it. So that's what I've been doing. Um, how's our sound? We sound good? Let us know if we sound good out there um, or if we need to adjust anything. Um, so yeah, I wanted to go live and talk about some of these portions. We've I'm I'm hoping that you guys have watched some of the shorts. If you've been watching any of the shorts series that I've been dropping, I think th this morning was the the tenth one maybe. Um, give me a thumbs up in the chat if you've been if you've been watching the shorts tips and you think that they're they're helping you out at all. Um, I'm looking for any advice on those. I really am trying to keep them simplified for noobs because I think. DaVinci Resolve in and of itself can be overwhelming. It's got so many bells and whistles that um, that it becomes really tough to, to, to figure out how to just do, you know, get started and start using the software because it's just, uh, it's, it's overwhelming. You know, I, a lot of us came from using things like Filmora, which was a lot simpler. It wasn't so intricate. It didn't have so many pages and options and features and now it's like we're all, uh, a lot of us after the, the license debacle kind of jumped ship and said, well, maybe we should start looking at um, some software that maybe has some higher functionality and we dove in hard because DaVinci has a great free version. So yeah, it looks like a lot of people liking the shorts. Cool. I appreciate that. Shorts are very good. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, I love the Noob Series. Cool. I'm glad. And they're going to be, they'll probably get a little more in depth or get a little, you know, there won't be so surface level as, as we keep going, but I'm really trying to create something where people can feel like they open up DaVinci Resolve and they look at it and it makes sense. Like, it's not like, oh, I don't know what any of that does. And I don't know what any of that does. Cause that's how I felt when I first opened up DaVinci Resolve. I'm like, my gosh, there's so many buttons. <laughs> like, I don't know what they all do. And the more I'm using it, the more I'm getting comfortable with the different things that it does. So, um, Awesome. Awesome. Love that you guys like these. That's great. Sweet. So one, I want to, uh, today, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about is one of the other tabs is, is the Fairlight tab. I've done a lot of talking about the, um, edit page. I should call them pages. I keep calling them tabs. That's how noob I am. I'm going to get yelled at by the DaVinci Resolve police. Um, the, the Fairlight page, which is their audio page um, that has a lot of great features in it. And I, when I was talking to a lot of creators, they're like, yeah, I just kind of get, you know, turn my mic up and <laughs> maybe a little equalization and that's about it. But there's so many options in the Fairlight page. Uh, and I get a lot of people asking me like, how do I get a better mic sound and how do I get things sounding great? And, and there's so much you can do with the Fairlight page that I wanted to make sure that we, uh, that we talked a little bit about it. Um, and we have a great sponsor today. Really quickly. Oh, wait a minute. Hit a thousand subs on Saturday, yesterday. Thank you, Daniel, for your continued awesomeness. Channel is at uh, 1,022 this morning. Woot, woot, way to go. Um, that's my friend Trey. Guess what, Corgi Butt? Um, with with uh, his all Corgi channel. That's awesome, pal. Uh, I love that you've dialed into this new channel, and it's just all about this Corgi life, and, and it's, it's connecting with people. It's fun. So, um, super sweet, man. Love it. Love it. Love to see it doing well. And there's my friend, uh, Deborah. Hi, hey, Deborah. Thank you for the $20 super chat. That's, um, that's fantastic. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> I want to, um, I do have to shout out today. As a lot of you guys know, we don't have like a DaVinci Resolve sponsorship and all these shorts that I've been making, <laughs> they make no money. 
so what we what we've been doing is working with different sponsors that I think integrate well with what we do. Uh, and today's sponsor um, is actually someone I really like. It's Epidemic Sound. Um, we're going to be using that was the, well, the song I played on the intro coming in was actually one of Epidemic Sound uh, Sound songs. They just have a great selection. We're going to talk a little bit about them. I'm going to show you some of the things using them in Fairlight, showing you how you can use some of those those audio mixes. <clears throat> but do me a favor. Instead of super chatting today, if any of you guys are interested uh, who don't have an Epidemic Sound membership, you can do things. There's a link that's scrolling underneath the screen, but I'll have Megan posted in the chat, and it's in the description. Um, do me a favor. It helps me out. If you guys go, you can use that link to sign up for a free 30-day trial, no commitment. Um, and you can check out all their music and use it in your videos. And I also have a discount there that's um, not a Rockstar 50. <laughs> that if you feel like actually purchasing a membership, uh, they do the monthlies. On the monthly membership, that'll give you 50% off the first three months. So I think it comes out to like, uh, what, like $7.50 a month with the discount. So divide 30 days a month into seven fifty, and it's it's pretty affordable to have awesome music. So um, we'll be talking about that more, but uh, I'd love it if you guys would at least uh, go check out the link somewhere along the way, sign yourself up, uh, use that link so that uh, Epidemic knows they did the right thing by coming to this channel and working with us and helping support the kind of content we put on here. Um, let me quickly scroll through here. So um, I'm going to pull up this. Let me add this to stream and see how we do here. Okay, I've got a new tool that I bought specifically. Let me turn off the uh, on-air sign so I can get as much screen as possible. I've got a new tool that I'm going to test out that should allow me. One of the things I hate about DaVinci Resolve is the screen, the, the UI, the user interface, is not only hard to read on, a, on a, your own monitor, but especially when you're live streaming. So I got this new tool, and if I hit these buttons, that should allow me to scroll all over this page and zoom way in and even draw on stuff. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Life is good. So I will be able to uh, do some zooming in and be able to show you some stuff. So hopefully this will be something that um, you can follow along with fairly easily. <clears throat> so let me ask you guys a question. How many of you are using uh, vocal effects processing on your audio if you're doing talking, if you have any kind of speaking parts in your your um, videos on YouTube. Are you guys, do you guys understand things like equalization and how to use compression and how to use limiters? Are these things that you guys are using? Just a thumbs up or thumbs down, let me know. If you guys are using a, lo using a lot of um, audio processing to make your audio sound better, or is it one of those things that you kind of go in there and kind of set the level, maybe a little, Roll off the high or, you know, tweak the EQ a little bit and kind of good to go. <clears throat> uh, Doug says he use, uses some EQ and some limiter. And, you know, Doug's audio always sounds really good, too. Um, I think you're a, you're a Final Cut um, Pro guy, right? That's what you're still using, Final Cut Pro? Um, too complicated. Here's, a, here's the one we hear a lot. Too compli complicated. I do, let me do this one. I do, but very rudimentary. Yeah, that's because it gets complicated. Uh, sometimes normalize or change volume if too low. Typically not. A little bit. Using audacity. Gotcha. That's what I thought. That's the responses I've been I've been seeing for a while. I uh, no idea about it. I get that a lot. And I think a lot of people either use a different program to try to get their audio to sound better. But the great thing about DaVinci Resolve is they bought Fairlight used to be its own company. It was a digital audio workstation. So DaVinci Resolve buys it, incorporates it into the software, doesn't change the price. <laughs> and then they start, now they have a full digital audio workstation incorporated into the video editing software. And uh, it's just one of those things that I like about Resolve. I was like, man, they're, they know how to do it. They don't play around. They're like, let's find someone who does this well, and let's just integrate it. So for those of you who, um, who don't know, yeah, Audacity, yeah, I hear you. For those of you who, um, who don't know which page I'm talking about, I'm going to take down some of my banners, get me out of here. Um, let me do this. Let me go here. When you look at DaVinci Resolve... At the very bottom, you have these these um, little icons, and they're called the pages. And when usually when I open it up, it opens up in this first page here. Uh, let me see if I can draw. You see that first one here? Um, 
that's your media pool page that where you bring you can bring in media and organize it. The second one is like the rough cut page. Um, and then you can get into the actual editing page where you do more detail. That's where I spend right here is where I spend most of my time um, when I'm doing my edits. The next one is um, well, you get two over. We got color corrections, and then we get over to Fairlight. Um, this is the Fusion tab here that I will not talk about. <laughs> right now fusion is another beast that we will tackle at some point it is a uh it is fusion is its own monstrosity so we will get to it but the this tab i'm talking about here so it's that music note down at the bottom that's the fairlight page and that's where you can start uh doing things with your audio tracks uh to really bring things up to another level and i'm gonna let me show you some of the things that you can do let's grab um for those of you who have, who have followed around uh, what the stuff I put up so far, most of you should know how to basically import footage, create some bins, create, uh, bring in some audio if you need it, <clears throat> things like that. Um, but a lot of times what happens is, is when you're trying to, um, when you're trying to do more with that audio, it's uh, exactly like everyone said here, we have a tendency to go, I just kind of get the levels right and leave it alone and hope it's okay. But let me do this. Um, I'm going to create a bin here. I'll put a bin up there, and we'll call that we'll call that an audio bin for now. And I'll open up that bin, and I'm going to import some some audio. Let's see, what shall we bring in? Here's one right here. Um, there's some music in this one. Okay, so this is oh, this is fun. I've got all the stems here. So these are the tracks. If you see, I just brought in in the upper left, in the audio tab here, I brought in a bunch of stems. And if you wonder what stems are um, on, when you're using, when you're using um, any of Ep Epidemic Sounds music, they not only give you the full mix of the song, but they give you the pieces like the drum track, the bass track, the vocal track, like the guitars, or maybe the synthesizers or keyboards, and they break it down so you can do a lot of stuff uh, rather than just put a song, put it underneath and let it play. So right here, you're actually looking at what is um, the different components of that one here. Let me see if I can draw here. So this one here is the, that's the full mix. And then I think it's uh, bass, drums, maybe that one's drums. I'll bring them in, we'll take a listen. But these are the different pieces of that, um, of that song. So let's bring them in one at a time. So if you're using Epidemic Sound, let's say, and you're using, this could be anything, it could be audio that's a vocal or but in this case we'll use music i'm going to bring each track in um, i'm going to bring them down and put them in their own track one at a time we'll start that one let's go this one that one's probably drums it looks like a drum track um so there's the four tracks and i'm going to line them all up so they start right at the beginning that's another cool thing if you just make sure they're all lined up in epidemics uh sound the way they do it then you've got basically the entire song so if i hit play let me know if you guys can hear this megan let me know if you can hear this that coming through yep you can hear it inside of uh can you guys all hear that okay inside of Streamyard. uh good as long as you can hear it in the live stream i'm happy so those are all the different tracks let me guess you can zoom down in here a little bit i'll get used to this new tool so there's all your different tracks right and i've talked a little bit about um in the shorts i've been doing about what some of the icons in each track does like the lock um audio tracks are a little bit different um than the video tracks i was talking about how the video tracks have a lock feature on each let me see you don't need my face blocking that do you let me see if i can unblock here uh, give me one second let me close that out come back over here and give you this screen there we go okay so as i was saying um in the, in the actual audio tracks, what you're going to see, there's the ability to lock, um, there's ability to auto set the auto cut, um, that's the auto select for when you're doing cutting and things. This is a solo button, and that's a mute button. So basically, you know, you can lock the track, you can set it so it's always selected for whatever might be happening. The S button is solo. Solo means you're just going to hear just that one track. And then the M button is mute, which means you mute the track so that you don't hear it. So pretty simple um, instructions on this side. That's stuff I think most people understand how to use. And when you are using this stuff and you play a song, you can hear there's different tracks here. If I pull this all the way back to the beginning, you'll see that um, there's a bunch of stuff going on here. If I solo this first track, now you're just gonna hear just that bass, right? Here's just the bass. And if I mute it, then it'll go away. Now I could solo the drum track 
and you'll hear just the drums on that section of the song. Again, this is one of the reasons I really like um, Epidemic Sound is because you can do that, because you can create these, you can, uh, you know, separate, do drums, do um, just the bass, just the vocal, whatever it might be. But what, what's, what I want to talk about today is, what's going on? Uh, they're saying it's a little bit low uh, volume. All right. Well, we can uh, we can pump it up a bit, and I'll uh, my the volume of the of the song track. Okay. Um, for the, for today for the for the sake of today, we're mostly going to be going through features. I'll try to get some of the the, the volume balanced out too while we do this. Um, one of the thing one of the things I want to show you though is really over in the Fairlight tab. So right now I'm in the edit page. Okay. So if we look here. And I go to the bottom, right? I'm still in this edit page. That's that third tab from the bottom that you can see right there. See how I'm right here, this, this tab? So I'm over in that, that media edit page. That's where I'm, that's the edit page where I'm usually cutting, putting my footage in, doing tweaking, adding text. That's where I've been living most of the time. But if I go over to here, if I go over to that, if I have audio tracks in and I go over to the Fairlight page, that one's a lot of fun. That does a lot of cool things. Let me click on that and show you. Now, just looking at this in general can be confusing. So let's start by just simplifying what it is you guys are looking at, all right? Um, basically, right here, what you're looking at in the middle, all of this, these are all just your tracks, right? The same track, audio track one, audio track two, three, four, and then there's a bus track. So let's start right there and simplify. Some of you guys, do you, anyone here know what a bus track is? Um, that's one of those things that I come from a, a, a music background, so I'm kind of used to some of these terminologies in here, but basically, um, think of a bus as, it's almost like your master volume, but there's a reason they call it a bus. So like basically all of those tracks that you have in your project, the drums, your, this one's got drums and bass and all these other things, they're all on individual tracks and they're all being sent to this one master fader that if I pull up that master fader up and down, it will control, it'll can take the whole volume up and down. But the reason they call it a bus instead of a master is you can create several different buses and groups so that you could do things like, okay, I'm gonna take all the tracks where I'm speaking and assign them to one bus. And then I'm gonna take all the tracks where there's music and I'm gonna assign that to one bus. And then I'm gonna take all the tracks that has maybe sound effects. I'm gonna assign that to one bus. And what it allows you to do is take those groups inside of your project, and instead of bringing each fader up and down one at a time, you've got them grouped so you can go, oh, this bus controls all of my my vocal tracks that I that I was talking in. Oh, this one controls, all, if I use three or four different songs, then I've got the levels of each set where I want, but then as I'm listening, overall the music seems a little loud. You can bring the overall music from every track that, that's in that grouping or that bus and bring them down. So that's really what, you, what you're looking at when you see, let me pull that back up so you can see it. When you see the tracks and then you see the bus, which is over here. You'll see that not only here, Right, you'll see it right here as a bus, but you'll also see it over on the right. If you go to the right, this is where all our tracks are. Now you have to kind of expand this. This right section is your mixer, and I can grab it and I can stretch it out so you can see all the tracks. That's your mixer. Your mixer is actually turned on from the upper right. If you go up here, there's a mixer tab, a meters tab, a metadata tab, metadata tab an inspector. So for any reason you don't see that um, mixer um, going on in the lower right, that's because you need to click it in the upper right. That's what turns those, those little corners on. And in each one of these tracks here is where you have all these cool things that you can, um, that you can really take your audio to the next level. So let me show you what some of those things are. And if any of this confuses anybody along the way, or I'm going, if I'm going too fast, just yell at me and we'll, we'll do our best to, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. I think sometimes what happens is, is with complex ideas, um, it takes a little time to kind of really get a handle on them. But I always feel like audio is one of those things that for me has always made sense because it's very linear. It's like, oh, this is something of sound comes out of your mouth. It goes into a microphone, it goes through a cable and it comes out, you know, goes wherever I want it to go. And using audio inside of your video editing software is not that much different. You got the track in there that represents your voice and you can put things in the signal path to make it sound a little better, like adding an EQ. You can put things like a compressor or a limiter, which would stop it from peaking too much. 
and can also sometimes if your voice gets too quiet at some parts it'll bring those quiet parts up and make them a little bit louder so that it it's um it's not normalizing sometimes people use that normalize where they hit this generic button and it just flattens everything to one weird level I hate that normalized feature like an audacity because it doesn't do anything subtle. It just cranks things up to a weird normalized level and doesn't, and it doesn't, it's harsh. It's just like a giant, it's like a giant um, volume knob that cranks everything up. But we're going to do some more subtle stuff here inside of, um, we're going to do uh, inside of Fairlight, uh, Fairlight. So as you're looking like right here, as you can see, each one of these tracks has a fader, right? Track one, track two, track three, track four. That's our music, right? Our bass, drums, I think there was synthesizer and one other instrument in there. Uh, and then our bus track all the way to the right. That's like our master. And as you can see above it, there's all these other options that might make you go, what the heck is all of this? Like, Daniel, I don't even want to, there's too many lines. I don't know what they do. It's all over the place. So let's talk about this for a second. Um, some of the stuff we wanna think about at learning is what these do. Every, think about this, every one of these channels, these strips is, is identical. So really all you have to do is learn what one track does and then the rest of the tracks you see, they're just identical tracks with something else on it. Maybe one has music on it, maybe one has your voice on it. Maybe you were talking and someone else was talking too, like you were doing an interview. So maybe they have their track where they were talking and your track where you were talking, but they're all treated the same. They all, once you learn how to deal with one, then it's just a matter of they just stack them together based on how many audio tracks you have. That's why a lot of times in those giant recording studios, you'll see those big mixing boards with all, the, all those knobs and faders, and you're like, wow, man, those must take forever to learn that. And the reality is they're all identical. It's like you're seeing a huge, you know, 32, 64 track board, and they're all just individuals like this that just keep repeating themselves. So once you know what one track does, then it's just a matter of, well, what's coming in with each track? What sound is on each track? So up at the top, I want to talk to you about some of these options. Um, some real simple stuff. I'm going to start from the bottom up, right? So here's audio track one. It's just telling me, there it is, it's audio track one. It's telling me right above it that it's being sent to bus one. So that means this track is going to that bus one that's over here in the corner, that sort of master volume. So now we know where it's grouped to. This right above it, this spot right here is the pan. They call that the pan. And panning really means um, kind of like balance. If you've ever been in your car and setting up your radio, you can get the sound to go to the left more or to the right more, or you can get it to go to the front speakers more. Or if you have speakers in the back of your car, you can send it to the back more. That's exactly what this pan feature does. So when you're trying to figure out, maybe in your video mix, you're trying to get something to sound, let me click it. When you click it, you can see that it immediately um, pops up a pop-up window dead center here. Let me see if I can get it. And you can see this is the pan, the pan feature, right? Let me get myself out of here. I gotta get my hairy face out of the image, okay. So here's the pan, and basically what you're looking at is at the top is your on-off switch. Um, this is controls your audio if you want it to go more to the left speaker or more to the right speaker. It, it does have a front to back. You can do this 360 audio, and that's really more designed for if you have quadraphonic sound or you're using a um, like a 7.1 or a 5.1, you know, depending on if you're using Dolby Digital, where, you know, if you're doing a movie mix where you go like, okay, this is going to be in the front speaker, you know, in the front corner left, and that one's in the right rear back. And it's all pretty simple. Um, they've got a lot of knobs to do, but what's kind of interesting here, um, you can ignore the knobs and they have like a button a bu right in the middle. You can actually grab that little gray button and move it in the, in the field. And if you look, all the knobs are moving. You can go, okay, that's, le you know, that's center, that's left, that's right, that's front, that's back. And you can go, oh, where do, I, where do I want this sound to be? Maybe this was the sound of a bird that I was mixing into my video and I wanted it to be, you know, up and off to the left. You put that up there and it sets it there, nice and easy. So that first option that we were looking at here, now remember, whatever you do, if, whenever you pull up a feature, that upper left corner here, you have to make sure that it's turned on. If you don't turn it on, the effect won't work. So make sure you always have that button click to the right and it's red. But that's what that first feature does on your track. It just moves it left, right, forward, back in your spectrum, okay? And then to get rid of that, you can just X out. 
Now above that, above that pan over here, and what's cool is you see, it shows me right here where it's left. Can you see that? So I moved it up and to the left, and if you see this little square, it's like that blue dot says, yeah, you took the sound and you moved it up. <laughs> you, uh, let me see if I can do that a little neater so you can see it. You took the sound from, from the center in the front and you moved it off to the left here. And that's why the blue dot is now over there and the other tracks are all still centered. So it's got some cool little features. You like, you might see this and go, what's all the graphs and the dots? The green represents, these greens left and right, represent forward and backward, like rear speakers, front speakers. So I pulled this a little bit back this way, and that's why these green dots are a little bit back, and these other ones on the other tracks are all the way forward. So that's just a really cool, um, a really cool, uh, panning and moving technique that most of you guys and gals will probably not use that much other than saying sometimes you might want to have something over in the left or something over in the right. Like a, sometimes it's cool to do like effects where you have like a car horn over to the left or something in, in one of your videos or something happening in the right. Makes a little more stereo spread to it. Um, but for most vocal tracks, you're going to keep them, you know, dead center and let the thing fly. Uh, now let me go back and let me see. Is there is there a way to rename the track so I know what it is? Great question. Great question. Here's how you can do that. Um, let me go. You can do it in two places. You could either do it where it says wherever it says the name of the track, audio one, audio two. You could do it there, or you could do it back over here on the track itself, where it says audio one, audio two. The way to rename the track is just to click on those spots. And you'll see that it highlights it. See how that get, gets highlighted right now? And then you can just um, you can just type in whatever you want. You just say, okay, this is vocal. And you go, okay, well, there's my you know there's my vocal track. If that's if that's what it was, right? So now it says vocal up here um, instead of uh, instead of audio one. So that's a really great thing. Um, why I just name a bass track vocal? Don't ask me. I should have called it bass. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. So renaming the tracks, absolutely. You can rename them right where it's, whatever it's called now, you can rename it to whatever you want. Click on it, it'll highlight, type in a new name. Um, now, when we're looking at those individual tracks, again, over on the right, so you saw that this was just the pan, right? That's what pan means, left and right, forward, back. Where do you want, where in the speakers is, is that sound going to go? Um, I'm going to jump right here to the EQ. This is your EQ or your equalization. The reason this line is flat right now is because none of these tracks have any um, EQ changed on any one of them. I didn't do anything to any of the EQ, but this is a really important place to understand uh, how to change or improve things like your, your recorded vocal if you're speaking. If you click on that blue line on any track, now, rem now if you look, any one of these tracks that I'm clicking on, if you look on the right, as I click on them, they get highlighted, right? You can see they're all highlighting track one, track two, track three, track four. So if I'm on track one and I say, um, maybe, well, no, let's try track two just to be crazy. We'll switch over to track two. And we'll say, okay, maybe track two, what is that, the drums? I think that was the drum track. Let me uh, see if I can just solo it and play it a little bit. I think it's a drum track. Yeah, so that's that's a, just a drum track. So if I said, you know, maybe I want to change the EQ of that drum track a bit. Once again, anything you see in that track above the fader, the fader is what controls the volume up and down, that little white thing on the bottom right here where I go up and down, see me sliding that on the lower right? That's controlling the volume of that track. And then above it, we saw the pan. And then that little line where it says EQ to the left. If you click on that flat blue line, it'll open up this equalization. Now, this is a little bit tricky, okay? I don't know how many of you are used to using um, either parametric or graphic equalizers. I think graphic equalizers are things that we've seen a bunch of times. It's a bunch of those little fader line, little faders that you've seen. It'd be like, you know, 12 or 20 or 40 bands and you can move up each one down. Or we've seen the kind of EQ that you would see on like your car where it just says bass, treble or mid and you can turn the bass up, turn the bass down, turn the treble up, turn the treble down or maybe sometimes you get mid range too and you can control the mid. Well, this is a this is a um, parametric EQ, and they're a little tricky to understand. So I'm going to go over this quickly and let me know if this makes sense to you guys. Basically, what a parametric EQ does 
is it looks at the entire uh, frequency spectrum from the lowest lows, which are over here, right? And then go straight across to the highest highs, which are over here, right? So the super highs on the right, that's your sibilance, your, your super high, crispy high frequencies, and then your really low sub bump, bump, bump. Those are way down here. Those big low boomy notes are all the way to the left. And then it just works across like a spectrum, right? That you got the lows to the mid lows, to the mids, to the mid highs, to the highs. Simple as that. Think about left to right, low to high. That's all that is. And on a parametric EQ, what they do is they give you the ability to put points along that spectrum. See how that's, there's like these little blue dots here and they're numbered, that says two, three, four, five. There are points in that spectrum that you can decide to open up them, you know, raise a section or lower a section in that frequency spectrum. So for example, let's say on this one, I wanted to raise the lows. I would grab, this is band number two. If you look closely, you'll see right here, it says band number two and it's active. You can see that it's orange. This one right now is currently inactive because it's in gray, but that's orange, so that means that's turned on and that's active, and that band number two is actually this number two dot right up here. So if we say, okay, that's band number two, it's the lower frequencies, it even says, if you look in closely, it's been assigned right here. It's like, let's make that the lows. That's mid lows, that's mid highs, and that's highs. So you could actually change um, which band you want that to be. This this, 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 they're all identical. It's just you deciding where in that spectrum you want it to represent. Is it the lows, the highs? But they, can, they, they start off left to right. So that number two band that I was pointing at, I could grab that, left click on that too, and move it around and see how it raises up the lows and then lowers the lows. It's making this curve. This is how a pet parametric EQ um, works is, um, it's going to work in curves. Instead of just bringing one frequency up, it sort of softly raises up a certain section of those frequencies. And the section is defined by this little bugger right here. See that little drop down menu? You can decide what that curve looks like. You can say, you can see there's four, four options right here, right? See those different options? And you can decide how you want that curve to work. Now where it's currently set, let me see if I can move some of these out of the ways and show you. I'll boost that, that two up and you can see what it's doing to the curve right there. See how it's changing it? See the curve it's creating? Now I can change that and say, well, I, want a, I just want that to take a, a very thin, narrow, low frequency out. And I can change the way it acts just from that drop down menu. That's all I did was change that menu right here. And the image, it looks like a bird, right? It almost looks like a drawing of a seagull like that. And that's exactly what it does. All it does is say, oh, you just want to find a very narrow frequency and pull it out. Like maybe there was one weird low that was making a weird honking sound in your vocal. That's where you could go, oh, okay, I just want to take that out. And you can either use the, the um, knob that's on that to move it around or you can actually grab the number two there and move it around that way. Just left click and hold and it'll move it right in the spectrum. I, I do that a ton of times, just clicking, holding and moving them around. Um, is there a way to listen in real time? Yeah, I can actually show you some of these in a second. Let me show you what these, let me do this. Let me show you what these things are and kind of explain them real quickly and then we'll do it with a, one of the tracks playing and you'll be able to hear some of the things that are going on. Cause I don't want to just move and you'll go, I don't understand what it is you're moving and why it's doing that. Ooh, look at me getting big over here. Hold on a second. Uh, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me go back over here. So that's all this is. Each one of these is a band. If I go to band three, um, I can turn this other band on and off. If you see, I'm just clicking on that. Now the band number three, I clicked on it and that turned it off because it's in gray. If I were to click on it again, it would turn it back on and that three shows up up here. And you can see I'm raising based on, you know, that's going to raise the low mids. This one's going to raise the mid highs. And then these are your super highs, right? That's your way up highs. So um, if you notice, this starts with uh, this one all the way to the right off this is off and it also starts with the one all the way to the left off these are both off these are really important ones that i think you guys should get to know get to understand these are what they're going to call your low pass and high pass filters technical terms all they really what's weird is the low pass filter is what controls the highs and the high pass filter is what controls the lows 
The reason for that is um, they'll call it the low pass filter, meaning it only allows low sounds to pass through. And then the high pass filter will only allow higher sounds to frequencies to pass through. So they feel like they're the opposite of what they are, but what they're really good at, and let me show you on screen what they're really good at, is taking sounds that may be like a little too muddy on the bottom. Let me reset this whole thing. Um, there's a reset button um, right up here, if you see here. If you ever like want to start from scratch, that's a reset button. If you click it, everything goes right back to reset. <laughs> Iggy's like, yeah, not confusing at all. Um, so let me click on this one right here. I'm going to start with this band, this one that says band one. When I turn that on, that is our high pass filter. It's going to set this up so that when I turn it on, it is like a wave that comes across. And the more I pull it to the right, it's removing all of those lows. It's only letting these highs, all of these highs right here, go through. All of that blue is what's been removed for frequencies. So it's like taking the bass on your audio and turning it way down, and it's only letting the highs go through. Now the opposite one of that is the um, low pass filter. Let me pull this one back. And that's the one that's over here all the way to the right. See this band six? So let's turn that one on and you'll see it does the exact opposite. This one is great for, if you've ever had um, a vocal that you were working on and whenever you said like S's and T's, they were really harsh. They were like, you know, sometimes I hear like news anchors will do that. We're like, um, especially with um, some female voices because they tend to have higher registers. It'll be really like harsh and like hit you with like really hard S's and really hard T's. If you use those highs and low pass filters, um, that's a great way to like roll off some of those highs that are a little bit abrasive. Or if something sounds murky, like it's this voice sounds a little murky like that, you can take some of that low out by using the high pass filter and just letting some of the highs come through. So that's a really good one that I think that you should understand. Real simple EQ. Your human voice doesn't even occupy a lot of these lower frequencies. So sometimes when you're out and you're filming and you get like wind noise, you ever like film and you get like the wind starts kicking up and your whole mic is like grumbling? That high pass filter is a great one. This one here that I'm using on the bottom end, what I'm doing is that's where that grumble happens. Most of those wind grumbling noises all happen down in here. So if you put a filter on it and only let more of the highs go through and not so much of those super lows that really your voice doesn't occupy those really low grumbly um, frequencies anyway, your vocal can, it can take a lot of that wind noise that you'll get sometimes in your microphone. So learning, just playing with these EQs, understanding that all we're really looking at here is low, low mid, mid, mid high, and then over to the high. So it's just from left to right, low frequencies to high frequencies. Um, to remove fan noise, I can drop the frequency. That's how I'm hearing it. You, you can, if you find there's like one annoying frequency, sometimes there's some background noise. You can try to locate that frequency and see if you could just pull it out. A lot of times that's what's, what really is good when you use that specific, um, that um, what th that singular pass one. See what I've got on right here, the one that looks like almost looks like a how I would draw a seagull. <laughs> if you do that one, that's really great for if you had everything else reset. You said I, everything sounds fine, but there's this one fan noise or something. You could literally set one of your frequencies to one of those narrow band filters, and then just move it. Go left and right, and go. Can I? Is this helping? Oh, right there. Right there is where, when I leave it there, it gets better, the audio gets better, it removes that noise. And that's a great way to find one frequency in your audio and just take it out and go, oh, it was just a little fan or a thing that was had a weird high pitch. Keep in mind, it's gonna take that frequency out of your voice too, but usually if you can do a very narrow band, um, it's, you don't, it's not really abrasive. It's not like you're taking, scooping a large section out, just a narrow band that might've been a problem frequency. Good question. So let me do this. I'm going to turn this off. Let me play. Let me solo the drum track. Let me go back to the beginning and I'm going to try to shut up and see if you guys can hear what happens when I use, uh, you play with the EQ on like the bit, the drum track. Hear how the bass went away? All the bottom's gone? 
Now the drums are gone completely. Now if I let that low end back in, Now if I were to do the same thing with the high, with the low pass filter and pull out some of the highs. Can you hear what that's doing? So it's just a really simple, it's just a really simple EQ setup where you're using a very different forms of curves to go rolling off some of the highs, rolling off some of the lows, maybe going into the middle and maybe you need to open up the middle and bring some of those frequencies up in the middle. Or maybe it's a little too boxy and throaty and you're going to pull some of those mids down. If you want some of that smoother, rich radio voice, just scoop the mids out a little bit. And a lot of times it'll take things like a harsh... Um, like a phone, if you, you sometimes your phone will get a very harsh microphone sound to it. It's a little abrasive. Scoop some of the mids out and find those frequencies. And that's really the EQ system here. Parametric, learning to sweep them, um, learning to play with it a bit. It is adjustable, so you know I won't go super deep into it, but play with that. Play with that EQ a bit, because you're going to find that there's things that you can do um, with the knobs underneath, like in, like change how wide the spectrum is. Um, in this case, let me do here. Let me turn on this one. Let me pull up number three. Can you see how I've just pulled up number three right there? That frequency. Um, that frequency I've now pulled way up like this. And see how it's pre-designed. It's saying, well, it's starting to go up here. It's going to the peak of the frequency where the three is at. And it's rolling back down this way. Well, you can control that width with the knobs underneath. They call that the Q factor. So if I go right down here on track number three, that Q factor, I can change how narrow or broad that, see, see what's going on up above it? I can go broader or I can go narrow. Maybe it's just I need a slightly not suit. I want to just bring up one frequency kind of narrow. Or maybe the whole mids need to come up overall. I can do more of a soft, rainbowy, pillowy, bring up, oh, it just brings everything up nice and smooth. So those cues underneath, they're literally called Q factor um, with a Q, if you can see those. Um, that's what that's doing right here. This Q factor is controlling how much of that, um, how much of that spread of the frequencies is it, is it wide or narrow? And if, just play around with that a bit because I think you're going to find if you just put your vocal in and start um, just you know testing it out, you're going to find that oh, like, I have a lot of control over the sound. Um, can you apply these changes to just one clip of a track? Like if I edited my video and I noticed there's something wrong with the sound in just one part? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to do that, um, Amy. The easiest way to do it is without having to keyframe anything, what you could do is literally cut those sections. Let's say, um, let's say there was one section one thing I should point to, see how narrow everything, all these tracks are in the middle, all those thin green bands. In the upper, um, there's two ways to do it, but I'll show you in the upper right. Right here, can you see there's some faders here? There's some sliders. Those sliders allow you to get a little more dialed into your audio tracks. Um, let me show you how they work. The first one you'll see is, t is the height. If I go left and right, you see how it makes those taller, and now you can really see the waveforms, and you can see all those individual beats and hits. So that's one way you can find, you can start looking more closely. And the one to the right of it, which is right here, so that was the first fader, and it has little arrows, like this is height, up and down. On obviously right here, you can see it's got like a left and right, and it does exactly what you'd think. It stretches it out, right? Oh, I want to get super far. You can get way in. You can get super far in, down to like tiny little degrees of notes, which is great if you're trying to cut your vocal, like you're trying to put two pieces together and you find like a little click or a noise. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll locate it by going super zoomed in and go, it's just that little spot right there. Now what you could do is like, let's say, can you see, let's see, let me show you right. See this spot, let's say right here whatever was going on in the song. Let's say that was an audio track that might have been a vocal or something. And maybe there was something right there where you needed that part of the audio, but there was a weird frequency in it that was making you nuts. Instead of keyframing, what you could physically do is you could go in here and you could select that track. You could actually select both tracks. And you can slice them, which is Control B. Um, go to the other side of it, right? And then select those tracks again. 
and then uh, Control B, and now they're now they're cut separate. See, I've got them here. So now what you could do is take those ones and do an independent EQ of it. You could either add a track. One way to do this would be um, you can EQ them individually. I don't want to get too technical. You can EQ them individually. Let me go back. I've just gone back to the to the um, edit page. So this is where we usually work, that edit page where everything's happening, our video and our audio. If you click on that so you can see that I have... That slice I made is obviously now visible here. That was the slice I just made right there, that little chunk. So I could now go, okay, I want to do something with that and fix it. You can select that in the edit page and up in the upper right in the inspector, that's up here. If you look, there is, if you scroll down, it's got its own built-in EQ section. Let me go up here. For that tr for that little snippet, I've got an EQ. I can go four bands, and that's a great place to just grab if there's a little thing. You don't even need to go to Fairlight. You can do that right in your, in your edit page. Separate that little clip, cut it free, and go right here. That's got a little problem. I'm just going to add a little bit of EQ for that one section, turn the EQ on, modify it, and then you're done. You could also keyframe it so it does it really quickly, but... For that one little noise in one little section, that's where I would probably do that, Amy, right here in the um, do the do the uh, in the inspector of the of the edit page. Um, when you're back over here in the Fairlight page, it really is like a deeper dive into all of this stuff. This is where you get super super um, into all the you know kinds of um, audio controls where you can really take your audio to the next level. Um, but yeah, great question. And, I, and notice the EQ, remember I just was playing around and I put an EQ on there. What's interesting is if you look over to the right on the mixing sections, you see all these weird lines. You're like, well, what do they mean? Well, remember this over here was where I had moved the pan of track one. I pushed it over to the left. So that blue dot's over there. Now we just started working on track two and look at that. See that little design? It's actually showing me the EQ curve that I've dialed in using that parametric EQ, right? It's saying, oh, you dropped, you've got it boosted up in the middle a little bit, you've got a frequency drop right here. So all those little bells and whistles you're seeing, it's just showing you what you did right there. That's the representation of the EQ curve that you put on that track. And then if I reset it, it would go back to a flat line again. So those are the basics right there of how to do your pan, how to do your EQ. But above that is another one I want you guys to all really start thinking about. Um, above that section, you'll see this dynamics. Can you see right here it says dynamics? And it's got all these weird sort of diagonal lines. This is a really important thing that I think all of you will... Um, you, you'll dig. It does some cool stuff. This is like before when I was telling you that we have the ability to add things like um, compression, limiter, noise gates. And I know some of these words are, might be sounding like, well, I have no idea what you're talking about, Daniel. But let me show you some real basic stuff. Um, let's just pick a track here. Um, doesn't matter, any track. What um, We'll do the, uh, we'll solo this first track here. And I'm going to click on right over here. If you see, I'm going to click on this dynamics box right here. That's what we're using in track one above the, where the pan is above where the EQ is then dynamics. Let's click that and watch what happens. This opens up and this is your dynamics um, box. It has a few different options here. These are actually three different effects in one. And that's really cool. Let me get my fat face out of the, out of the, uh, screen so you can see what's going on here there we go let me pull this okay so what you're going to see here is obviously make sure it's on either the whole thing is on or it's off the very first one right here is your expander or your gate as i scribble over it and you can't read it um, what a gate or expander does is it helps cut noise that might be going on in between words. Like if you're talking and there's a background noise happening, you can set up an expander or a gate that basically hushes down that track in between when you're talking or when things are being said. Can I copy one uh, track setting and apply it to another? Yes, you can. Um, you absolutely can. But let me hold on one second. I'll, before I get too deep into that, yes, you absolutely can. Um, 
So right here, what you want to do, that's your expander. That's where you can actually quiet down noise in between takes. Like if you happen to be, um, you know, you have like some, like a little fan noise or something going on. And every time you stop talking, you can hear it. You can use a gate or an expander that'll quiet that thing down in between words. This right here, the one next to it is your compressor. And what that is, is that thing I told you about where sometimes you'll be talking and either your quiet parts are too quiet or your loud parts get a little too loud. It takes the overall thing and squashes it down to get the lows, the quiet parts a little, a little louder and a, the louder parts a little quieter. To the right of that is your third one. And it's a lot like a compressor, but it's called a limiter. And it actually is another form of a compressor. And what a limiter does is it actually stops things from peaking beyond a certain level. So think about um, like if you if you had something that you know it was you, the mix is going great, but every now and then you see it going into the red too much and it's peaking. You can put a limiter and go. I, I like the way everything sounds. It's just there's some spots where it's peaking, and I what do I got to do? Turn the volume down at that point. You can use a limiter, and every time it wants to peak, it'll squash it down. It's like an automatic, um, like top end adjuster that'll go. I'm only going to let you get so loud, and then we'll squash it down so it won't let it get past a certain volume. So that expander gate, really great for quieting things down in between, like denoising some of your stuff. And if there's a little background noise going on, it'll help in between words and things like that. It'll pull it out. Um, the compressor is what's going to squash top and bottom together and get you more of a rich, full center sound. I love using that sometimes, a compressor like on a soft voice or someone, you know, who's talk. I always talk so loud. But if someone's talking kind of quiet and then they get louder and then they kind of quiet down again, that compressor can stop it from feeling like you're constantly riding the, the volume knob on their voice. kind of smooths everything out. And then the, the, the limiter is the very top. Just won't let it go past a certain spot. So let me see if we can actually put this on one of the tracks and maybe you can hear it in action. Um, let me see. Can I turn the volume up? I'll try to turn the sound settings up here just a little bit. Um, I'm pretty maxed out. Let me see. Um, so here's a, we're playing a track. Let me see what we can do, which track we're playing. Uh, let me pull this down for a second. Go back to the beginning. Uh, and then we'll, we'll apply some and you just, I'll just quickly show you how, what it looks like so you can see it going. So for playing a track, Let's, so, which one are we, yeah, that's the, it looks like we've got, let's just do drum. Let's do drums alone. Uh, play that. So this green line you see, nothing's being applied right now. I don't have anything on. Now if I turn on, let's say, the compressor, you'll see this vertical blue line come in right here. And that's telling you where it's compressing, at which point. The threshold, if I wanna bring that threshold down, it's, it's gonna start compressing from a lower point in the, in the volume spectrum. So if I'm just compressing a little at the top, I'll turn the threshold up. And if I wanna compress a lot, I'll pull it, you know, I'll set the threshold lower. And then you can do ratio, how much compression it's gonna get. Can't really hear it too much, but you can see it's you can see it on the meter level. It's kind of control it. It's squashing some of those sounds. Now the limiter is going to really, really squash the top down. It usually makes things sound very squashed and sometimes fat. Sometimes that's a good sound. So you can control things that aren't going to peak. You can see it's a lot. It's really controlling the top end. This fader right here, if you can see it, this one right here. Sometimes when you add some compression and limiting to try to get that, that, that sound really squashed and sounding good so that's smooth and easy, what happens is it starts getting quieter. Like, oh my gosh, I, I added this effect, but then the overall track got quieter. Well, that little, they call it the makeup gain. If it gets too quiet, you can raise that up and it'll bring the volume of that track back up again for you. I've got it pretty pinned anyway. So that's all you're really doing there is adding some, um, you can add expander, gate, compressor, limiter, play with these. Gate and expander, the difference between the two of those is pretty much a gate is a very open and closed one. Like if you want the, if you want the mic to basically be shut off, 
if the if there's not like something being spoken into the mic like if it just gets below a certain um level it'll automatically get quiet like in between words that gate is a very like open and close whereas the expander is a little smoother it sort of removes it's a smoother um noise removal tool but it's a good one for if you do have some background noise and things going on if you're in a room that might have air conditioning and stuff try applying the expander in there and it can actually help get rid of some of that be careful if you're in a room that has a lot of noise when you start adding things like the compressor. The reason being is if you've got very quiet fan noise in the background and you compress your vocal, guess what it's gonna do to that quiet fan noise? It's gonna bring it up. It's gonna make the quiet things louder. So learning how to use these properly, um, making sure that when you record your audio and your vocal that they really work well together, like you've really got a quality audio that you've recorded. But then when you bring it in here, you can really tweak a little EQ, a little compression on it to get it to sit a little fatter so that the quiet parts are a little louder. The loud parts are pushed down a little bit so it's really rich and full. And that's how you end up getting like that, that really rich radio voice that's really smooth and round um, from getting that right amount of EQ and compression. Um, am I missing any questions? Uh, Dimitri, $10 super chat. Perfect timing for the stream. Resolve update uh, 18.5 just came out and added a whole bunch of features, including the Fairlight page. I haven't, I haven't updated. I have to check it out. Thanks, uh, Dimitri, for the super chat and for the tip. Yeah, they've been doing great at, at updating. Um, I used to love Filmora for the fact that they did update a lot, um, but a lot of it was updating stuff to fix the problems that it had, whereas it seems like Resolve is doing a great job of um, the things work great and then they're updating uh, and adding new features in daily. So uh, I'm loving it so far. Are you guys liking it? How, I haven't even had a chance to really ask you guys. What are you guys thinking about Resolve? For anyone who's just started out with Resolve, you know, like where did you come from? What software were you using? I know a lot of people in here had used Filmora, but what are you thinking about Resolve? Are you liking it? Um, do, you, do you feel like it's 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 too hard to learn? Do you feel like it's uh, it it's just um, to, it's too much of a hurdle. Um, it does have a pretty high um, system resource demand, so you do have to have a pretty good computer uh, to, to run it. Uh, Iggy, of course, who's a PC guy, builds great computers. I love Resolve. It's amazing. Yeah, I agree with you, man. It's really, really strong. I've, I've been liking just the amount of things that you can do in a, in a given session. Just like... I mean, I liked Filmora, but it was like, what, what could you do with the audio? You could EQ it a little, let you send it left and right. You know, they maybe had a couple effects. Uh, we'll talk about effects in here. This is going to blow your mind. But, I mean, just the built-in stuff in Resolve. No, I have the studio version, so I'm, I paid for the license. So it has a few more features in certain areas. But almost all of these features are going to be there for you in the free version, which is just crazy. Just crazy. Uh, Javier Jones says, uh, Javier says, uh, I love Resolve. You can really grow with the tool. I agree. I think it's worth the investment of learning it because once you learn it, you don't need to upgrade to anything down the line. It's it's a great software that can roll, you can roll with. You know, it, it's a professional grade tool. It's got the best color correction in the industry. So I think just the things that it has is if you learn it, you're never going to have to learn something else, right? You're not going to have to come back and and go. Well, now I need to learn something else because it couldn't keep up. Um, from Adobe, many products to the new window DaVinci. I've never, I, I never have to leave the app. Yeah, I tell you, isn't that great? It's like, it's just, um, the, the Adobe did have a lot of integrations where when you're in DaVinci Resolve, it's like they, they got a digital audio workstation, Fairlight built right in. You just click another page, boom, you're right in there. Everything is, it's really wonderful the way they put it together. Um, I used Filmora. Uh, for a lot of years, but two years ago, I quit Fillmore for DaVinci, and it was worth it. So two years you've been doing it. So you're probably pretty handy at it now, right? But I, I think, like, this is one of those ones you can constantly keep learning. Um, it's just one of those things that it, it's got so many features that it's... Um, that it's, it's like there's always something new to, to some new thing that you can explore and, and really figure out. Vegas was pretty easy. Well, that was the question. Is DaVinci harder than Vegas Pro? Yeah, I don't I, I, I don't like using the word harder. It's got a steeper learning curve because there's, it does more. There's more functionality. And whenever something can do more, there's more pieces of the puzzle. And everything I've been trying to do here, hopefully, to start off is really just get people to open things up, find where things are, play around, understand what some of the knobs are. I'm not looking to go super deep and show you every specific example of things. I really just want you to get in there and go, well, okay, well, where, when I want to work on audio, how do I do that? Okay, go over to the Fairlight page. There's your audio. See those little sliders on the right? 
that's where you can start playing around with your EQ and you can put on some effects. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I think is super important to understanding uh, how to make you know great videos because most of us most of us who make videos for YouTube, you know, it's pretty simple editing. It's not like we need. We're not making, you know, most of us <laughs> aren't making Marvel movies. You know, we're not making something that's so over the top that we need. Okay, I need to have, you know, three superheroes smash through out of the sky and laser blasts. Usually we're trying to make, you know, solid videos that we know how to edit. You know, that we know how to get our cuts down, get our transitions, get our pacing right, get the audio to look good, get the color to look good. So that's where I'm really been focusing um most of my efforts right now is trying to help anybody who's opened this up and went, oh, no, <laughs> that looks that looks so hard. Where is the voice recorder so I can use it for software tutorials? Great question. So the voice recorder is actually you're recording right into the 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 digital audio workstation of Fairlight. All right. So we all understand Fairlight is just a tab at the bottom. That's you know that's the last one from the right. That you go okay. That's if I want to play around with audio, I got to click over to that that page that tab. So let me show you. Let me pull that up and show you what we're looking at. So we kind of have an understanding here a little bit of, of what the dynamics is, right? We looked at that a bit. So we can close that out. I think I can close it up. I can hit the X. So back over in the right, okay? We have, as you can see now, what I did was, this was the one, again, I pushed the pan that way. This one here on track two, I played with the EQ. Back on track one, I was playing around with the dynamics, so going back and forth, right? So I was just playing around with the different dynamics back and forth. Um, you, and now you're seeing those lines change based on what I did. It's just representing, you know, you here's the EQ change you made. You put some different dynamics over here. But um, if you want to actually record, this is interesting. Um, what you have to do is um, see up here on whatever track, if you want to record like audio, see how it says no input? What you'd need to do is assign an, an input for one of these tracks. Let's say, let's say you added, let's say you had all this stuff going on. And you said, well, Daniel, now I need to add a vocal track in here. Let me just shrink this down. What you can do is click over here anywhere, right over here, right click and say, all right, I'm going to add a mono track. That's what I'm, if you can see this, I'm actually, I just right clicked, add a track, and then you have an option of, you know, there's the 5.1. You can do crazy Dolby surround 7.1. But usually it's a track is either mono or stereo. Stereo for like music, if you need things that are going to be panned left or right. A, a single audio track just for a vocal pretty much only needs a mono track. So we'll add a mono track. And as you can see, it just added that track down um, here, audio track five. It stuck it in right before the bus. So now there's this blank track that I can go, okay, now I'm getting ready. I want to record my vocal into Resolve. So all I do is I added a track. And now if we go back over to the right, you can see over here, there's the track, right? Here's track five. I haven't done anything with it. But if you scroll up to the top of track five up here, you'll see that it says no input. That's where you need to assign um, an input to that track and say, well, I need, it's like turning your mic on. Just like when you go to a live stream or you do anything, when you select, if you're recording into anything, um, you have to select, if you've ever done a Zoom call, you have to select your mic and turn it all, turn it on so people can hear you. Same thing here, just do the um, input and then you want to, um, select let me see if you can see it the drop down menu you see from input it's un underneath it says no input then it says input so what you want to do is click on that click on input and now it's going to open up up here an input window and you can see it says audio inputs right here now for me these are the de these are the decks that are attached to my system right now i don't have anything selected so this is the one i'm using right now for my mic so if i said okay i need an input i want to use that one right Right there, I've just selected it. It's now got a white box around it. I've selected it. And then down in the lower right, you want to click on this patch. You need to patch it in. You need to tell DaVinci Resolve, hey, patch my microphone in, that one I just selected. And it'll say, okay. And now we're patched into here. Um, and once you're patched, um, then you should be able to go into that track and you can arm it and activate it. There's two places you can do this. If you look at, let me see, right over here, here's my audio track five, right? And I talked about this earlier. There's, you can lock it, right? Lock the track. This one, you can solo it so you only hear this track. You can mute it so you don't hear this track in the mix. And then this other thing right here is the record. That's how you can arm the track and actually get it to record. So if I see, if you see what I just did, I hit it. I have to have a, a microphone assigned. So I go to the input, 
where it says no input. I have to select an input, select my mic that I want, the, whatever's connected for my mic source. Then once I've done that for the track and patched it in, I just hit that record, and now we're all set to go. Right now, wherever the playhead is, if I sit here and go, okay, I'm ready to go, if you look up top, here's your controls. As I draw all over them, I've like as I erase them by scribbling them over them. That's your rewind, that's your fast forward, that's your play, that's your stop, and that's your record. So all I would do at this point was is to hit record, and whatever's playing, right now it's actually hearing some of the drum track. I have to mute the drum tracks because I got that soloed, but let me do this. It's actually recording some of that. And if I want to stop it, I stop here. It's actually it's actually picking up the drums because I have those soloed. Uh, I'm going to mute, mute. Mute, mute, mute. Hold on one second. You're getting a weird delay? Getting a delay? You were. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let me do this. Let me delete that. Um, it's creating a, a patch delay. Let me see if I can mute it, but I should be able to record again with it muted. Yeah, so if I'm sitting here talking, it should start to record whatever I'm saying. Um, I muted it in there just so you're not hearing it through my speakers and getting a weird delay. So I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, and it's recording, and when I'm done recording, I then just hit stop. Now I've got it zoomed way in, right? That's why you're seeing so much that you know you're seeing it like like it had a weird red flashing look if i did it here and did that again and i have it zoomed out a little bit it wouldn't look so weird right you'd see this recording as i spoke um it's just right now doing that thing let me go down so you can see it doing it oh it stopped right there okay uh right here you can see it's kind of recording in red so it's just recording as i'm talking this is me and it's going into there and when i'm ready to stop i go up and i hit the stop button right and then after you're done recording over here you can turn the record mode off because you don't want to accidentally hit record and record over something so you can return you can turn that all off and then if i did this right if i go back in here and i solo that you should be able to hear just me talking recording as i spoke um it's just right now doing that thing let me go down so you can see it doing it don't oh, stop right there okay uh, right here, you can see it's kind of recording in red. So it's just recording as I'm talking. This is me, and it's going into there. And when I'm ready to stop, I go up and I hit... Okay, could y'all hear that all right? You can see that was me recording right in. So the simplest parts of that were um, all I did was to review. Go to the track that you want. Make sure if it says no input, you have to click on that. Open it up. You can see track five. I've add, I clicked on input. Let me do... I'll do it on a different track. Um, click on input. It opens up the input window. Let me see here. Make sure you've got it set for your audio inputs up here. Select the source, the mic source, and then when you're done, go down to the lower right, and you want to click. I've already, you know, click on patch, and you would, it would patch that in. I'm already patched in on that other track. Um, and then just set the track to record, which can be done one of two ways. You could set the record here in track five. By clicking that but you could also do it over here too if you look right over this side in each track it also has a duplicate of each thing the solo the record and the mute so you could actually arm that track for recording and then record into that track does that make sense does everybody kind of get that did that kind of feel like you saw what was going on for a minute there uh, let me know thumbs up thumbs down if that made sense that's the um that's one of the things that it, recording right into da vinci is fairly simple and and you can sit there and you can just you know scrub right along and record your audio track you don't have to use a completely different digital audio software a lot of times i'll do voiceover stuff where i'll be doing tutorials type things and i'll do that right from my desk so i'll need the ability to just record right into the software and then i can edit it and chop it up later on let me see we got the thumbs up yeah cool yep cool got it bravo yep yeah. um yes um Thank you. Can you do this on the edit page? There is the ability to do some record. I won't go. I'm going to stay on the Fairlight page for today. It's a great question, and I'll be jumping around more. I'll do more of these, and we'll and we'll dive deeper. I'm hoping that everybody has this this live stream to come back and start playing around with Fairlight because when I asked how many of you guys are working on your audio, it was like. We, I don't know if I really know how to. So I want to get people into this page. I want to get them using Fairlight and playing around in here. I'm going to show you a couple more things. So really all we're looking at here is it's just a bunch of tracks. You got the ability to add EQ. You got the faders on the right, right? And you can go in and you can add equalizer, dynamics, compression, limiters, all those things. You can put noise gates to quiet down some of the noise in between your words when you're talking, take away some of the breaths. Take out that lawnmower that you can hear in the background when you're when you're trying to get your 
your video film that the neighbor always pulls out this leaf blower. That's like story of my life. Um, one other, couple other things I want to show you about each track though, that's important, just so you understand the specifics of what we're looking at here. Let me go zoom in over to the right. Okay. One of the other things you're going to see about that. Okay. So we've got, we understand every track is the same. This is the same as this is the same as this is the same as this. It's just another track side by side. I've got five tracks in the project. So you've got five different um, vertical tracks right here. That's the only reason we're seeing all these buttons and knobs, but every single one of them is the same. This narrow band all the way up and down here is exactly the same as this one here. It's just another track, all right? It's as simple as that. So above where we were at, there's something that's kind of interesting. This is plus button for effects. There's a lot of great effects not only built into DaVinci Resolve, but what's cool about DaVinci Resolve is it runs VST plugins. This is really technical. Um, VST plugins are basically software plugins that you can purchase separately, but DaVinci Resolve will recognize them and will let you use them in the software. And that can be things as simple as like a reverb or a delay or a flanger or a chorusing effect or Think of any any type of audio processing effect like, hey, I wish I could get my voice to do like a weird vibrato-y wobbly thing. Well, I've got a, a vibrato plugin, right? That I VST that I can that I found online. A lot of times you can get free VST plugins. There's tons of them out there. If you get them and learn how to put them into your computer system, just like with Windows, you know when you find a really cool font, you get the font, you load it into your, your system, and then when you open up other programs, there's your font. You go, oh, I got all these fonts when I open up, you know, Photoshop or when I open up even WordPad or whatever the thing is, suddenly you have all these different fonts or even in your video editing software, you go, yeah, the fonts that are available to me in my software are the same ones that I have, you know, installed on my system. The same thing is true with effects. Da Vinci will recognize those effects and go, oh, you have that installed on your system? We can, you can use that here in DaVinci Resolve, that cool reverb or that cool delay or that cool whatever audio VST plugin that you want to use. Um, so Fairlight can use same VST plugins as Reaper 100%. 100%. So a lot of you have seen me um, talk about Reaper on my channel before and show how to get free VST plugins and how to install them into the, your system, into your computer. Anything that you have installed uh, in your VST plugins from like Reaper or any other digital audio workstation, um, they will be recognized in Resolve. And let me show you, let me show you where they're at. Uh, this, which is awesome. I just love that. That's one of the huge advantages I love to um, DaVinci Resolve. Let me close this out, get rid of that, and let me go. So if you go over here, pick any track. You see right here where it says effects, and then there's a plus button by each one? That's where you can open up your effects. So if you pick, let me go the first track and hit the plus button, you'll now see it's got all these things broken down. Channel, delay, distortion, dynamics, EQ, instrument, mastering, modulation, metering, pitch, restoration, reverb, vocals. There's like all these different effects. And for every one of these that you click on, it'll open some up. So let me just close out this. I gotta have to do it this way. Hold on one second. Get this one. I'm gonna go over to metering. Um, I'm gonna click on that. Okay, let me see if I can show you this. So what I've done here is I clicked on metering and when it went over, the Fairlight effects are ones that come with DaVinci Resolve. So that's Fairlight effects that are available to me. Um, like I said, some will be limited for the free version. The studio version, I think, has a few more. But that's, you just would click that arrow and you would see more metering effects. But these ones here that say VST, those are ones that I've installed. That's just different VST that I already have installed on my computer. And things like Span. This is a spectrum analyzer. It's one of my favorite tools um, that I use all the time for vocals. And I think this one was actually free from a company called Voxenjo, but let me show you what it does. Uh, let's put it on track two. I'm gonna add metering VST span. Now this is, let me see if I can get this. This is a spectrum analyzer. And what it does, remember we were talking about the EQ, how it went from left to right and you could dial in, you know, the, the, uh, the ups and downs and roll off the bottom and the high pass filter and the low pass filter and make the mids go up and the mids go down. And some of you had some questions. What if you had one frequency that seemed like annoying? How would I get, and we showed how to dial out at like a more of a single frequency. 
Well, things like this, uh, this is one of my favorite tools, a spectrum analyzer, because what it does is it actually analyzes the graph of my audio. So let's take what I, I just had my, uh, let me see, I just had my vocal in here. Let me mute, yeah, so my vocal is right here. Let's put it on this one. I'm gonna put it on this vocal path here. Um, and that's track number five. So in track number five, I'm gonna add that VST plugin that's called Span. All right, now when I hit play, this is going to analyze the frequencies let me see if I can get this scrolled in right. So that what it will do is like, if I have a lot of lows, it would be like way up here. And maybe the mids were a little bit not so much. And then maybe there's a lot of highs and it'll draw in a real time active wave, almost like what the EQ is seeing that's already in your track. And it's a great way to figure out if you need to adjust something in your audio. Let me try, let me show so I can show you real time. So I'm gonna pull up the, yeah, let me pull it up, sorry. Uh, span again. Here's Span, and let me just play this track, and you'll see, uh, this is the thing I just recorded of me talking, you'll see this in real time start analyzing the EQ of my vocal that we recorded a minute ago. It wouldn't look so weird, right? You'd see this recording as I spoke. Um, it's just right now doing that thing. Let me go down so you can see it doing it. Oh, it stopped right there, okay. Uh, right here you can see it's kind of recording in red. So it's just recording as I'm talking, this is me, and it's going into there. And when I'm ready to stop... Can you see that? So that's all that's doing now is looking at my vocal and going, that's how many lows you have, that's how many mids you have, how many highs you have. If it was super bright, um, then you would see it in here. You can, this is great for finding problem frequencies because maybe your, your voice realistically doesn't occupy much of these super lows, and it shouldn't occupy too many of these super highs. Realistically, vocals do something that's kind of like, um, I want to call it almost a rainbow curve. It's kind of like that every voice is a little different, but it'll show you what's going on in there. And different mics have different mic, you know, vocal response. So the mic that I'm using right now, um, you can see the actual audio spectrum of what it captured. So when I play this, that's what you're looking at. It looks so weird, right? You'd see this recording as I spoke. Um, it's just right now doing that thing. Let me go down so you can see it doing it. Oh, it stopped right there. See, it's not too bad, though. Right here you can see it's kind of recording in red. So you can see, and as I stop it, then it all just shrinks back down. So this is really cool for um, learning, like, to analyze your vocal. Like, if you're listening to your vocal and you go, I don't know why it sounds bad. It just doesn't sound, something sounds wrong. You can use a spectrum analyzer, put it on your vocal and go, let, let me analyze. Is it got like, you would see if there was like weird frequencies in the middle, they would be spiking way up and you'd be seeing these little pops and jumps and go, oh, that's the frequency. And you can actually hover over the frequency and go, that's what I need to dial out. So I love that tool for that kind of thing. I think it's, this is perfect for doing that kind of analyzation where you go, all right, let me find the problem. You know, maybe it's right here, or maybe there's a spike, maybe a little bump in the low. Right now doing that thing, let me go down so you can see it doing it. Stop right there, that's actually put it pretty flat it's not too bad so the tone right out of my mic is actually pretty good but that's where you could do it um an interesting thing um so like so one of the things you want to think about is let me show you this um let's let's scroll back over here i can show you this in action this will explain two things at once so you can see here i have that span dropped in a track i actually think i put it in two tracks this is the one i put it in right over here oh it's my vocal track Track number five. So once I put it in, it's saying span, right? Above these other ones, I don't have an effect in there. I don't have an effect in there. But anywhere where I did add an effect, it'll list it up top so you can see, oh, yeah, you've got that spec span is short for spectrum analyzer. So you've got a spectrum analyzer attached there, right? So that's what it's telling you right here. But one of the things you want to think about is look at all these things. You've got effects, you've got dynamics, you've got EQ, right? Well, what if you want them in a different order? Like, should, should what if I want my effect to come on before my EQ? Or I want the, this, you know, so it's, I want the dynamics to happen after the spectrum analyze. Like, I, I have a different effect I'm using, and I want to be able to change things, the order. Well, if you look right above here, let me click this out of here. Um, right above here, you'll see right in this top row, this is called order. And all of these right here have the same thing because it's the identical in every track. And it's effects, dynamics, EQ. And that is the order. And what you can do is if you click on it, 
look what happens. You now have the ability to select a different order and go, no, no, I want the dynamics first and then the EQ and then the effects in the chain. Now, or maybe you want the EQ, then the dynamics and then the effects. Um, and that's one of those things that can be, you'll, you may not see the need for why that's important now, but as you start learning more effects and learning to put more things in, you're gonna go, I'm so glad they have this, this ability to change the order in the series of which of these things happens first. Where I use it a lot, let's use this track an example, right? So I wanna make sure, look at the order right now. It says FX, this is the track that my vocal's in. Effects, then dynamics, and then EQ. Why would I want to change that? Let me give you a reason. If I start adjusting the EQ and I want to make sure that I see those adjustments in my spectrum analyzer to make sure if I'm pulling out frequencies and I'm doing the right thing, I want the spectrum analyzer to go, yep, no, you're doing a good job. You're pulling out the right frequency. That won't happen if the FX happens before the EQ. So I need to rev I need to change the order. I need EQ, probably EQ dynamics, then FX. So all I'll do is click on that, right? I'll open that up. And what I want is probably um, one of these two right here, the EQ and then the effects last. EQ dynamics effect is probably the one I want. So I'm gonna go with that one. Now I'll change the order. And all I, all I did was it just changed the order of those. And now it says, if you look, these all say the same thing, the first four, but the last one I've changed the order. And all I did was click on it. Now the order's different. This is where you can really see some fun stuff happening. Let me show you. So I'll let me exit out of this one, and I will pull up the Spectrum Analyzer is right here. You can see it on screen, right? Now let me pull up. I haven't done anything with the EQ on this vocal. So let me do this. If I actually played this, let me see if I can get this so you can kind of see it. This is the same as this. I haven't changed, this is the raw, the spectrum analyzer is just gonna tell me, this whole thing right here is just gonna tell me what's going on with my recorded audio. And then I've got the EQ that I can now change the equalization of the sound of this. And when I modify this because of the order I have now, you'll be able to see it here. So if I start rolling off all of the lows, you'll see the lows start to disappear in the spectrum analyzer. Let me, let me do that in real time and let you see what I'm talking about. Let me get this thing set up to a point here. Um, so let me do it this way. I will play this and I will do some adjustments. Once it gets there. It wouldn't look so weird, right? You would see this recording as I spoke. Um, it's just right now doing that thing. Let me go down so you can see it doing it. Let's stop right there. Uh, right here, you can see it's kind of recording red. See that? So, Took all the lows out. Talking, this is me, and it's going into there. And when I'm ready to stop, I go up and I hit... Right? So I just took all the lows out, and you saw it happen in real time. You saw it happen over over here. When I took all those lows out, what happened was you saw this all start to lose the lows. As I slid that over, you saw them disappear in real time from that track. And when I, where, where it can be really helpful is usually don't take off a whole lot of lows. I'll usually take a little bit of lows to take rumble out, but it's really good if there's a sibilance thing that I was talking about. Let me do the same thing and let me roll off some of the highs. So I'll play that same track uh, from the same spot, hopefully. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, we're still playing, that's why. Okay, let me kick that back. Let me go back yeah. here. Yeah, fine. Uh, right there. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll roll off some of the highs, okay? And you should see in real time, this start to roll off and the top end will start to disappear from the vocal. And it'll take away some of the super top end, like the, the, high, the super highs, T's, S's, K, the K sounds. All right, let's do it. Looks so weird, right? You would see this recording as I spoke. Um, it's just right now doing that thing. Let me go down so you can see it. Doing you hear it? it? Oh, stop right there. Okay. Uh, right here. You can Too much. See it's kind of recording in red. So it's just recording as I'm talking. This is me, and it's going into there. And when I'm ready to stop, I go up and I hit... See what I did there? It was just enough to sort of take off some of those super highs. Um, and it just, it rolled off. As I rolled off the stuff that was over here... Let me go back a little bit. As I rolled off the stuff here, you started seeing this all roll off there too. That started moving backwards in this direction. So those are some of the things that I love using. I love having a spectrum analyzer that I can insert right in as a VST plugin. I can go, I have that on my computer. And if I go in and I open up Fairlight, if I'm in DaVinci Resolve, 
it'll be listed in there. I can pop it up and I can use it in the software. Really good for rolling off things. It's really cool for doing things like making lo-fi music. Like if you want to get a very cool lo-fi sound, you can start rolling off some of those those tones, especially if you're using anything from Epidemic Sound. Did we talk about Epidemic Sound recently? Epidemic Sound. You guys, I have to shout them out again. Epidemic Sound is a sponsor of today's video. Um, as you know, there's DaVinci Resolve isn't isn't sponsoring any of this stuff. Um, and we're, uh, you know, and the, we've been making a lot of shorts on the channel and they don't make any money. And uh, Epidemic Sound has been great about su uh, supporting what we do here. So listen, if you're interested, please check out. There's links below. Megan's been dropping them in the chat. Go try. You can go try Epidemic Sound for 30 days for free right now using that link that I've got. Share.epidemicsound.com forward slash Danny Patel, April 23rd, APR 23. The link is in the description. It's in the description of this one. It's going to, Megan will post it in chat. Go do me a favor. It, makes, it helps me out when they see that people from my community have gone over and check out their thing. I love their music. And I also have a code. If you like it, you can sign up for the monthly plan. It's 50% off your th first three months. And it's costing you like $7.50 a month. And for 30 days, $7.50, it's like two cups of coffee and you got music for a month. But go try it for a month. Sign up, test it out, see if you like it. And if you do, use the code and grab a few months and play around with it. Um, because it's really, I love what, I love their music. I think their music's great. But let me let me go back to what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you some of those lo-fi tricks we were talking about, right? Let me see if I can do it here. One of the things I really like about Epidemic Sound, remember I was telling you how they break up the, the audio tracks? Let me do this. I'm going to show you. Let me get back real quick. So here's, um, let me mute my audio. I'm, gonna, I'm the, where I was talking in this track. I'm going to go all the way back. Let's get all the way back. Okay, so we're here at the beginning of this song, right? Um, one of the cool things is, as I said earlier, because Epidemic Sound doesn't just give you the song, they also give you the what they call the stems. So instead of just giving me the song, they break it up by each track, which I love. So in here we have, oh, well, here's... This is your drum track, and that's your bass track, and then that's part of the, you know, the the keyboard, and that's one of the melody lines uh, down below. Sorry, down at the bottom, and I can turn each of those on and off. Instead of just having a song, I can actually control them separately. This works great when we have all these mixers going on inside of um, DaVinci Resolve. A lot of times, have you ever had this happen? Where like you're working with a song on your, you put it underneath your video. And the song, you turn the song down, but like the drums are loud. Like you can still hear the drums, but you can't hear the melody anymore. One of the things I like about Epidemic is they give you the stems. So in here, what you can do is remix the whole song any way you want. Um, and I'll do things like just a simple mix. You can go, okay, well, these are all in different tracks. If I start playing this, maybe the drums are too loud. And I just, and I just want to take the drums down. Wow, the drums are kind of too much for what I want. I'll just turn that track down. So now I'm just hearing the drums on that one. And then I can decide what other things I want louder. Turn bass up more. So a lot of times when I'm mixing, I'll do this thing where I'll, I'll, uh, I'll definitely like change the mix to work with what I've got going on. So I'm changing the levels of the drums and the keeping the bass louder. Really, really cool thing you can do. But what's really cool is you can start doing some cool lo-fi effects. Um, so what you can do is like, remember I was showing you with the EQ and stuff? So let's take the, let's take like the drum track. Let me solo the drum, that was the drum track. I'm gonna solo that. I think this is the one right here, yes? All right, let me turn it up so you can hear it. All right, it's got a bit of a lo-fi sound anyway, but if I do something like, let me get that EQ out on that one. Let me reset it. And then I can go, I know, I wanna make it really lo-fi. I'm gonna just roll down the very top. And if you remember, that was that low pass filter that only, that's the very top band six that pulls it back and only lets lower frequencies through. To get that lo-fi sound, you can go, oh, I'll do that, I'll just roll it back. Can you hear it getting a little more lo-fi? Then drop that back in the mix and you can actually start hearing what it sounds like.
That's a really cool thing for when you happen to have certain songs that you love using, but maybe maybe the uh, the drums are a little too snappy. You could turn them down, roll off some of the highs. Um, absolutely the reason I use Epidemic Sound is for that, because I can control the music mix and not just stick a song in. I can take parts out. I can get rid of the drums. I can get rid of the guitar part or just use the guitar part or loop the guitar part or loop the drums. And it really gives you that flexibility to do whatever you want um, inside of your video edit. So please check them out. Link down below, link on the screen. Um, that, that free 30 day trial is absolutely worth it. Cause I think you'll fall in love. They have so many different genres, so many different beats per minute. You can find anything with vocals, without vocals, stylistically mood. You want happy, sad, you want country, do you want hip hop? Do you want, they have it all nicely organized. Um, let me see. Let me just see what we were talking about here on the, uh, what else we have in the audio track. So most of this, the basics we went through, I'm hoping this kind of makes sense for you. So at the very bottom, right, these are our faders. That's the, that's the volume for each individual track up and down, right? Then we got into right above that was the ability to solo. There's a solo button there, mute button for each track, and then record if you were going to record like your own vocal right into DaVinci. We showed how to do that. Um, the bus, this is where it gets sent to, the bus, right over there, that bus. Um, above that is, let me see, let me set that up again. Above that, as you saw, we have, um, in each track, there is the ability to pan left, right, right? Move that around. You want it more in the left speaker, more in the right speaker. If you've got a Dolby system, do you want it in where you have like five or seven points around? You can go, oh, I only want that in the front left speaker of, of you know, my Dolby setup. Above that, you have your EQ, where you can equalize the tone of whatever vocal you've got or maybe some music you've got going on. Above that, we've got our dynamics that I showed you, the noise gate, the compressor, the uh, limiter. Um, above that, you've got the ability to add your own effects, VST, and use some of the more the fancier effect, effects that are in um, DaVinci Resolve. Above that, you have your order, which remember we talked about, what do you want to have first? Do you want the EQ, then the dynamics, then the effects, or do you want to change the order? That allows you to change that order. Um, I, I really think that if you're playing around, even with the free version of DaVinci Resolve, definitely check out some of the effects they have built in. Let me go to number five, which I'm going to solo, which was the one where I was just yammering along and I recorded it. Um, I'm going to go into right here. I'm going to click on that plus button under, this is the effects box, right? Right across here. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to add, let me see if they have like a reverb or a delay. Let me see, dynamics, uh, yes, down here, I can see it. So down below you can see, um, as I expanded, it says reverb. These are the reverbs that I installed and here are the ones that come directly with Fairlight. I haven't even tried them. Let's test one out. Let's put a little reverb on this vocal and let's see what it does. So I'm going to click on that plus. Reverb, click on Fairlight, and then the reverb. Now this opens up. I think you guys know what reverb is. It's when you can make your vocal kind of sound like you're in a, a cavern or that you're at the Grand Canyon, you know, and you're kind of yelling that big echoey. If you've ever been in a big cathedral, that sound of not quite an echo, but that, that big open hall sound. When you're in a big open gymnasium and you yell, it's not so much an, a delay like an echo, it's reverb. It's the sound of your voice kind of bouncing around and creating that huge chasm effect right so let's turn this on let's see what we got going on we'll put a little fair light reverb on the vocal here um let's go for it let's see what it sounds like so that's a really heavy reverb. Um, I haven't used this particular one before, but I can tell you what it does because the most reverbs are very similar. There's different types of reverb. Pre-delay is basically, there's a quick little delay um, right after your vocal when you want the reverb to kick in. Reverb time would be how long that reverb is. It is a small, does it sound like you're in a small bathroom or does it sound like you're in a huge church? right? And you can start playing around with the EQ and the tone of it. 
And then over here is the most important one, dry and wet. That is something you guys should be familiar with those terms. Dry and wet, when we talk about any kind of effect for vocal, wet means you've got a lot of that effect on it. Dry means you have very little of that effect. So if I went completely dry, you would hear no reverb. And it's right now set for completely wet, which is why it's so heavy. But watch what happens. I'm gonna take this last little thing here and I'm gonna turn the wetness down and you will then hear that reverb start sounding a little more like, oh, now I know what that sound is. We're pulling as I spoke. Um, it's just right now doing that thing. Let me go down so you can see it doing it. Oh, it stop right there, okay. Uh, right here you can see it's kind of recording in red. So it's just recording as I'm talking. This is me and it's going into there. And when I'm ready to stop, I go up and I hit. See, so now it started sounding suddenly like I was uh, like I was just in a room, like a bigger room, right? So you can set some reverb. You can get that effect if you ever want to create an effect like you were, you know, you were in a big wide space and you had a very dry vocal. Sometimes I'll take a vocal like this that's a little too dry. Sometimes you're like certain mics get very boxy, and I'll put a tiny bit of room on it, like a very small room, and I'll open up the sound of the mic a bit by adding the tiniest bit of small reverb just to get a little bit of space on the voice. Cause you, sometimes like the lavalier mics and stuff, they almost sound like, they sound like they're so close that there's like someone's holding their nose and they're really stuffy and boxy. And sometimes adding just a little reflection can make it feel like, oh, I'm in a room. When I talk to people in a room, it's not like it sounds like a huge echo, but there's a little bit of natural ambiance that you can bring in by using things like the reverb. But under that effects tab, that plus, and then the effects, go play around with all the cool um, fair light effects that they have right there, um, right there on that effects section here. Uh, and you hit that plus button and you'll see all the different options for metering, mastering, effects, delay, all kinds of cool things that you can add. That was a reverb we were playing with. But they've got quite a few um, different um, things that you can look at. As you can see, modulation, metering, mastering, instrument, EQ, dynamics, distortion, delays, reverbs, um, things for vocals. Um, there's all kinds of just neat things to help your vote, like different tools to help get your audio squared out. Um, and, or if you're doing like we did here, shout out to Epidemic Sound, playing around with the mix of your music, that's another way to do it. Um, I wanna show you one last thing. There's one last thing that you wanna pay attention to if you're in here. If you have a lot of tracks going on like this, and you can see I don't have a lot, but you know, there's a few tracks of music and then there's a vocal track and some other things. You can create groups of where things go. Let me show you how to do that. Um, it was kind of like that bus. Right now there's one, two, three, four, five tracks and they all go to that bus, that master fader that we were talking about. Well, maybe I, I want these, this is the music. Music, it's like drums, bass, guitar, and synthesizer. Maybe I want those all grouped together so that once I have them set exactly where I like them, maybe I, I got the, I took the drums down a little, I made the synthesizer a little louder, maybe the bass was up, whatever it was. But now the overall music is too loud. Do I have to take each one of these and pull them down a tiny bit? That would take me forever. Well, what you can do is click up here in group and you can create a group for them. So let me do that. I'm gonna click in the group and I'm gonna call, if you see right here, it'll say, well, what, what group do you want it? We'll call it group one. We'll say, you know what? I want all of these things to go into group one. I'm gonna click on all of the music ones. There's all the epidemic sound, um, the, they call them the stems the epidemic sound stems, okay? So now when I look, all of these stems are now in a group, right? They're all in a group now. And if I look, let's see, where is it? If I pull this out, if you notice, there's been a new fader added all the way in the lower right, and it's called group. It's called group, right? Now I can change that name. I think we talked about it just by clicking on it. I don't want to call it, you know, I could, I could call it whatever the music or whatever, call it whatever I want. You know, and that's what it is. But the minute I change it to music, then each track that was originally assigned to group one, it changes that name here too. And it says, oh, you changed the name of that group to music. It's now music. Um, so each one of those tracks is labeled music. And what's cool is when the music is playing and maybe I'm talking at the same time, I can now, I've got the music dialed in the way I want different settings than, than you know, drums up or drums down, whatever that might be. I can go over and I can control the, all of those music tracks, all four of these tracks are now gonna be controlled by this one music fader. So I can sit there and go, hey, play that, would you? And just let's find the right level. And you play it. Recording as I spoke. Um, it's just right now doing that thing. Let me go down so you can see it doing it. Oh, stop right there, okay. 
uh, right here you can see it's kind of recording in red so it's just recording as I'm talking this is me and it's going over there and when I'm ready to stop I go up and I hit so you see what it's doing now all of those faders did you see how they're all moving with this one down in that lower right they all move up and down when I move that one up and down that's all all of these oops sorry all of these are now controlled all four of these are controlled by that one so I've got them grouped together that's an important thing that you'll need to know for when you a real life uh, example of that would be if you were if you had a bunch of takes of you talking right it was on different tracks like maybe one thing you filmed on your phone and you've got some b-roll that you were talking to but you filmed that from a camera and then another one was from a gopro and you got all the levels where you wanted so they sounded good together but then you were trying to add in some music and some other sound effects and stuff you could group all of those different microphones of you talking in different through different devices different cameras group them all into just call it my you know my my vocals my voice group them all into that and now you can control because you got them all sounding the right level to get to each one of those each mic sounds right like that when i go from this mic to this mic it sounds good the right level but overall all of the vocals are just a little quiet group them now you can control bring all your voices your voice up all at once all the voice tracks down at once all music tracks up at once all down at once really great for sound effects that grouping feature is a really good one to learn so you can have them all grouped have that separate fader and go perfect i got it pretty much there but i just want to make sure that i get you know that final tweak where i get it right where i, where I want it so I, I that's that's most of the basic components of Fairlight in the mixer section. I think that's where most of you um, want to probably start. Get in there, play with the EQ, go over to the Fairlight page, play with the EQ, play with the dynamics, play with that compressor, play with the noise gate and the expander a little bit, um, play around with some of the effects just to try them out and go, I'm going to do something fun with my voice and put a little delay on it, a little reverb, just to learn it and go, once I know where that is, now I know how to get there if I ever do need to do a scene where I'm like yelling and I want it to sound like I'm yelling across the Grand Canyon and go, hello, hello, hello. And I go right to the effects and I can add a delay. Play around. You'll be surprised how much you can improve the sound of your vocal. And we'll get in deeper, you know, in some other conversations about ways to use some of these plugins to correct your audio a little bit better. But I think you'll find once you learn what those features are and start hearing them and using them yourself, that things will naturally start working out and be a little more, um, they'll be a little easier for you to understand where they are and why they do what they do. Um, fusion, yeah, we'll be doing, Darth, we'll do a fusion one. Um, fusion is a fusion is the beast, is the one that it, it, it can go forever. I mean, it's, there's so much you can do in fusion. Um, and I wanna make sure I can explain, I wanna keep it simple, and I wanna make sure I can explain it in a way that people understand, and I will get to a fusion one, we will do that. Um, group your horns exactly right like you um in from my end when we used to do recording we do a lot of music recording we would have like a trumpet a trombone a you know a saxophone player you know you can have all these different horn sections in there alto sax a baritone sax you'd get all the horn section like mixed right the right level for the trumpet the trombone and you get them all together you group them all together into one and then you can bring all the horns all up up and down at once that was a that was something we're very used to in the studio um one more time guys thank you for hanging out today definitely please do me a favor and go um, check out that link for epidemic sound let them know that we've got a strong community and when, and we're not we're not afraid to click a link and go try out a free 30 days of epidemic sound i promise you it's such a good product just try it for the 30 days just to see how cool the music is and the music you get in the 30 days you're allowed to keep on your videos they don't they have a, the allotment um page right there where um I'm sorry. What, the, what are you? What are you doing to me? What, was, <laughs> what are you saying, Megs? We had a question oh, earlier, go ahead. Um, wondering if not a rock star is on Epidemic. <laughs> no, no, because they don't have it licensed from me. But it is on. It is on. I'm not a rock star. Is on um, iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on. It's on all the major streaming services. YouTube music. Um, it is on the other ones though. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, please check out, give Epidemic a whirl. We have the Not A Rock Star 50 code that will get you 50% off the monthly try. If you wanted to buy the first three months, it'll give you half off. So it only costs you $7.50 for an entire month. If you like the free trial and you want to keep going for a few more months, try some more music. That's a great way to do it, 50% off. You, I can't beat, I don't, I don't mind it when someone cuts their prices in half for us. So thank you for uh, hanging out. I, thank you for the great questions. I hope this was useful. I will be doing this again. Don't be afraid 
paid to ask me questions down in the comments section of this live stream. And I do my best to really keep up with comments. So if there's something specific that really um, has been bugging you on DaVinci Resolve, whether it's you know related to the Fairlight page or not, just ask me and we'll see if we can get to that and get some of those questions solved for you. Uh, Megan, thank you so much for holding down the fort for me, my friend. You're always the best. Um, you guys try to have a great rest of your Sunday if it's the weekend for you, and I'll uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.